My name is Emily Owings and I had aplastic anemia. Lost the ability to produce my red cells, no oxygen to my brain, I got foggy, couldn't speak coherently. Went to my family physician here in Sioux City and he said, um, I think you might have leukemia. You need to go to the hospital. And I said, okay, well, I get off of work tomorrow at four. And he said, oh no, you're not going to work. You are either going to the emergency room right now or you're checking in tomorrow morning. Well, I think finally knowing it is better than not knowing. They injected her frozen cells, which were thawed before the procedure, and those little bones, marrow cells, float around into your bones, and if you're lucky, they take up residence and start reproducing. And as they reproduce, you've got new bone marrow, and bone marrow creates blood. So I started being able to clot and heal and get oxygen to my body again. I knew it was going to be burdensome and I didn't want them to lose their minds or get so involved with me that they forgot about themselves. My grandma and my mother and my father and my sisters and my brother and my husband all rotated because it's really draining on a person to see a loved one suffering or cranky a lot of times. The drugs will do things to you that psychologically you normally wouldn't snap at someone you care about, but it's, I mean, it is painful and uh, a lot of them affect <laughs> your brain. So to rotate caregivers and to take a break when you need it, please do because you need it. It took several weeks before I had energy to get out of bed at all. And the side effects of chemo, I pretty much got them all. They give you a list and it was as if subconsciously I was checking off the list. Like, oh, nausea? Sure thing, I'll take that. And um, it, was, it was pretty horrifying. Um, I had an IV tree that would give me fluid and all of the medicines that I needed and it started to embody the disease. Like, if I can just get rid of this stinking IV pole, then I'll be better. So really forcing yourself to eat and swallow so that you can take the pills by mouth, that was my ultimate goal, and the IV pole was sort of this demon that I could fight and, I don't know, focus on. Mm -hmm. And that was really important to me as a stubborn person to have something to, to rail against and fight against. Another thing that I sort of railed against was the dehumanizing aspect of having a disease and feeling like you are aplastic anemia. You are this chemo patient. And, and that was really debilitating. Just kind of getting women together to talk about um, the loss of sex drive, the inability to feel pretty because you've got edema and your face is swollen or you look like a hollow anorexic or, you know, you're this bald person walking through. For men, I think it's different because if you're a bald man, oh, poor bald guy lost his hair. But when they look at a bald woman, they think, oh, she's sick. And it's strange, but people avoid looking at you. I, I know it seems like a really small thing. They'll look and then you see them look away. And it's really disheartening and dehumanizing to be this person in a mask with no hair and people not knowing how to relate to you. I think for the general population, just make eye contact. Uh, you're not gonna catch whatever it is that someone has just by looking at them and acknowledging them and 
you don't have to giggle at them and be like, oh, everything's just great, you know, but just to say, hi, I see you and recognize you as a human being. All psychology classes talk about like this looking glass self where our validity, uh, validity as a human being comes from other people acknowledging us as people. So um, just getting together with other women who relate to that loss, and it is a loss, it's grieving for the way you look. Um, that was really important. It helped me acknowledge that that's not just a vanity, that is part of who we are as people. And I think it gave me permission to go try on the scarves and try on the wigs. I think I'm more grateful every day, but I stand back and think about it every once in a while. And I'm a little bit more forgiving of myself, less of a perfectionist maybe. I don't have to uh, vacuum the curtains <laughs> weekly anymore. I, I don't have to um, look at the five extra pounds that I'm carrying and be devastated about it. And it's more than five pounds, according to my doctor. <laughs> But I don't care as much. I'm, I'm more willing to give myself time to do what I need to do. On January 21st, I had a secondary birthday party, not only because I like parties, <laughs> but also because so many people were supportive. And at the time, I wasn't able to thank them. The cards were very meaningful, and I finally got to read them and cry right before that rebirthday party. It was awesome.